the condor. The Incas considered this bird to be a messenger from God, a guide who accompanied the dead on their journey to the afterlife. Five centuries on, the legend continues. In the Peruvian Andes lies the Cotahuasi Canyon, a gaping valley three and a half kilometers deep. More than one driver has lost their life to this ravine, but the condor was there to guide their souls. None of the passengers dare to look out of the window, a strategy which helps them to stay calm. In any case, they would rather face their fears than face exhaustion. Only a few years ago, people still travelled these 35 kilometres on foot. In the Cotahuasi Canyon, no one forces their way through. The smaller vehicles give way. Better not to rush. This is exactly the philosophy for truck driver Rosendro. For him, patience is key to survival. Es la quebrada de toro que nos tranca. Tenemos que estar sin carretera abajo un mes, dos meses, así. Pero igual, igual, igual tratamos de pasar. Es es mi tierra. Y el valle más hermoso del planeta quema como la boca del diablo. Porque el diablo su boca quema, pues bota fuego. For centuries, the devil roamed the Andean mountains in the form of the conquistadors, cruelly enslaving the Incas. They were the first to travel these mountainous paths, carrying gold and silver on their backs. Peru may be a country abundant with precious minerals, but the descendants of the Inca see it differently. A rich country full of poor people, whose attempts to earn a living often come at a dangerous price. But in Peru, gold takes many forms. Like bird droppings, one of the best fertilizers in the world. Harvesting it is a painful process. Los mayores ya no aguantan la chamba. Peru is developing rapidly, but at what price? Road building between the villages is often rushed, meaning the residents have to suffer the consequences. Even if it makes their lives easier. Yeah. 
días, tres días para llegar a Tayabamba. Ahora cuatro horas y ya estamos acá, estamos en Tayabamba. Over the course of time, Peru has gradually become the country of strong men. The conquistadors made no mistake when they founded the city of Toyo. Its climate, between 22 and 30 degrees all year round, makes it the city of eternal spring. But this is not its only asset. Constructed at the border of the city, its coastal location allowed gold and silver, mined in the Andes, to be quickly sent over to Spain. Nowadays, these mines continue to be exploited, a good source of income for Consuelo and her husband, Lucho. This enterprising couple supply the miners with bricks, soft drinks, beer, flour and other goods. 20 tons to transport, despite the perilous route. Lucho and Consuelo leave at dusk to keep their vegetables out of the midday heat. They are 373 kilometers away from the mining town of Retamas, 20 hours of driving on the edge of a precipice. They hope to arrive late afternoon on Saturday, the best time to sell their 500 cases of beer. The couple will never be millionaires, but their business allows them to send their two children to school. 15-year-old Liznet is always sad to watch them leave. Lucho is the designated driver. He doesn't plan on making any stops. But 20 hours behind the wheel would be impossible without the help of a stimulant passed down from the Incas. <laughs> Lucho isn't just battling against the road. At certain points, like on this hill leading up to a 3,500 meter high pass, his truck crawls along at 20 kilometers an hour. He could relax, but instead, he is doubly vigilant. Having reached the top of the passage and with danger averted, Lucho puts his foot down. He accelerates and begins to take risks. Mm -hmm. 
But his need for speed causes him to forget one small detail. His truck is weighed down with 20 tons of goods. And so the precious minutes gained on the way down are lost. But bigger troubles await Lucho. He and his wife have fallen asleep. Now they have overslept by an hour, an hour that they must now make up for. At the crack of dawn, no time for a coffee, they set off as quickly as they can. Focus is essential. On these roads, there is no room for error. If you fall, there is no coming back. Although some drivers have a stroke of luck, this truck fell more than 30 metres. After landing in the bushes, its driver escaped unscathed. <laughs> If they manage to retrieve the truck, their next mission is a matter of more than just cleaning up the canyon. With an average salary of 370 euros in Peru, replacing a vehicle is not a feasible option. Indeed, Lucho is now having to pay the price for having bought a set of second-hand tyres. Business is not looking good for Lucho and Consuelo, especially as the most dangerous part of the journey is yet to come, the Marañón River Canyon. Driving through the Andes requires good sense and self-control. These roads claim the lives of dozens of people every year. Yeah. Rosendro is a winemaker. His vineyard is at the other end of the Cotahuasi Canyon. It is a 35-kilometer journey along the region's most dangerous path. Rosendro is one of the few locals who owns a car. The bus only comes twice a day, so he willingly volunteers as taxi driver. Okay, 
¿Por qué no debías llevar arriba al hospital, Ben? While he's driving, Rosendro takes no chances, but despite the chasm below, he's confident in his driving abilities and his trusty 20-year-old truck. Esto salta por, las, por los huecos y... normal. Es el carro antiguo, peduro. Lata fuerte. Ir despacio aburre. Entonces el carro también está más o menos y hay que darle nomás fe. The pickup truck is approaching 40 kilometers an hour. Es peligroso, mira, es todo peligroso, mira. Y adentro es abismo, a ver, mira adentro. Allá adentro es abismo. Aquí se fue una camioneta para adentro, pe. Para adentro se tiró. El chofer, pe, este, salió, pe, el poste lo salvó, pe. Si no era el poste, se iba para adentro, pe, al río. Es profundo, más de 300 metros adentro. Tiene un camión. ¿Dónde está? Acá, acá hay de pase, ¿no? Y un poco difícil acá para dar pase a los carros. Ampliación necesita pedirte. A fair dream, but an unlikely one. The road is just eight years old. The diggers are not ready to come back. Still, this is already a step forward for Rosendro. Before, it took him two days to get to his vineyard on the back of a mule. The biggest problem is the cliff face, as the rock crumbles easily. Se llevó pel todo el huayco, se lo llevó. Y no había pasada, entonces se ha hecho con maderos de eucalipto. Se ha hecho un puente y por ahí se pasaba el carro, pe. Ya, yeah. aquí le voy a mostrar. Ahí le estamos mostrando en esta zona donde... Gerardo, despacio, despacio, frenando. Tira, tira, la yata, la yata. Ahí nomás, despacito, despacito. Uh, era peligroso, pero un poco de miedo que se podía caer el carro. Despacio, suelta, despacio. No va a dar, no va a dar. No, no, no. No, no. Ya, no más, no más. Sí, sí, sí. Ya acostumbrado a, a estar en, este, en estas situaciones. Ya está, ya. Bravo. Caes muy adentro. Cuidado, 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 cuidado. Mira esta piedra, cómo va a caer. Cae. Uy, ya cae adentro, pe. Ya no sales de adentro si caes. The Cotahuasi Canyon is worthy of its nickname, the Devil's Mouth. Yo he vivido ahí en la boca del diablo, he nacido. Ya ahí es mi tierra, pero de niño he vivido en el río, pe. Me gustaba ir al río, pe. A cazar, a pescar camarones y trucha, pejerrey. Tirarme al río, pasar, a estar todo el día bañándome al río y tirarme en la piedra como, como el lagarto. Esta tierra es herencia de mis padres. No es parte de mi vida esto, porque ya desde años he trabajado acá. Many years ago, the conquistadors arrived in this region and cultivated grapevines. Rosendro continues to tend his plants using 16th century techniques. At harvesting time, he still presses the grapes with his feet. Estas maderas son para la viña. Estos hay que cargar para arriba con los peones. Without the use of any machines, Rosendro produces 5,000 litres of wine each year. It's a dream to export the wine. To be able to export it. We have to work and, de repente, to be able to export it, to look for a market. Making ends meet in Peru requires hard work and a strong will. Conditions are often bleak. So imagine what it is like when the only way to make a living 
lies in the middle of the desert. This man's work takes him as far as the Paracas Desert. This vast expanse borders the Pacific Ocean, not with a beautiful beach, but with a hard cliff edge. If he wants to earn some Peruvian soles, Chicoca will have to climb down it. A 60 meter descent without any safety measures, well, apart from a short warm up. Para que la fuerza vaya saliendo. Para que vaya saliendo la fuerza. ¿Te acuerdas? ¿Estás segura? Sí. ¿Te acuerdas cuántos años tienes? Tiene 10 años. Chicoca is perhaps the only fisherman mountaineer in the world. So why take such risks? In fact, this place is a natural reserve teeming with fish. Net fishing is forbidden. Only fishing rods are tolerated. Consequently, Chicoca has almost no competition. On average, the fisherman catches close to 20 kilograms of fish a day, but today he catches none. The strong waves, along with his sea lion friends, seem to have scared off some of the fish. Chicoca's day is not wasted, however. He also sells seaweed at the market, but yet again, a meager harvest. At 66 years old, this exercise is becoming increasingly difficult. <laughs> 
Chikoka spends weeks at a time in the desert. He does not have the means to waste petrol, driving 35 kilometers home every night. Due to the overheated brakes and a flat tyre, Lucho and Consuelo have now lost nearly half a day. Retamas, the city of gold miners, is still another 60 kilometers away. The couple are expecting to sell 500 crates of beer over the weekend, but the journey has not got off to a good start. Even if he were to speed up, Lucho faces a major problem. He's about to take on the most dangerous part of the mountain, a winding road full of dust that flies up into the air, often blocking the driver's view. Lucho slows down. It's just as well as it takes him a couple of attempts to get around these hairpin bends. By the time they arrive in Retamas, Lucho and Consuelo have been on the road for 26 hours. 26 hours of danger and exhaustion. For nothing. The night is well underway and the streets of Retamas are almost empty. It will take them four days to sell their 500 crates of beer. Two days longer than planned, far away from their daughter. At night, the streets of the City of Gold look just like mining tunnels. By day, the image of Retamas is less enchanting, a construction site cluttered with huts topped with tin roofs. The town lives purely for its gold mines, for centuries, miners have been picking the Andes to pieces.
Carlos struck gold 14 years ago. At the time, he was slaving away in the coffee and cocoa plantations, earning almost nothing. Nowadays, he continues to work hard, but the pay is better. Almost $600 a month, twice the minimum wage in Peru. He decided to get his brother involved in the venture and, more recently, his son and nephew. The small family works in a mine abandoned by the industrialists who originally exploited it as it was not producing enough profit. Each working day is a risk as the mine crumbles around them. O sea, la presión ya con el, la madera no dura acá por el, por el clima. Mira. Yeah. Está. Ah. Yeah. Al toque se, yeah. se deshace. Y más la presión lo rompen. Ha habido este de consorcio una, un accidente fuerte. Se taparon ahí una, un, un scoop, un difunto. Y es por eso también creo que lo han dejado. To communicate with the outside world, 70 meters above them, the workers use an ingenious system taken straight from their childhood games. El teléfono lo usamos a través de esto, nos comunicamos. Ve. Arriba, jala. Abajo. Oh. Hola. Jala. During the time of its industrial exploitation, the mine produced hundreds of kilograms of precious metals. Nowadays, the family mines just one and a half kilograms per year. This is Veta. Here is the Veta. There is the gold. Yes, there is. Extracting the gold with a pickaxe would take too much time, so the men use explosives. This is the dynamite, and this is the detonant. So what we do here, the preparation is very dangerous, and we have to know how to prepare it. This quantity takes more than or less than two minutes to detonate. The dynamite releases toxic gases during the explosion. And there is so much dust that the air is unbreathable. <coughs> One hour later. Carlos and his family extract around five tons of minerals every month in order to produce 125 grams of gold. It's not a huge amount, but it's enough to get by. Queremos educar nuestros hijos, pero ya educamos la secundaria, más el superior ya no nos alcanza el dinero ya. Por ese motivo nuestros hijos se quedan así en el en el abandono, vamos diciendo, ¿no? Mil, una tonelada. So the energy is going to go. And it's like a car. We're going to drive a lot of times. Nine cars. 
Every year in Peru, almost 171 tons of gold and 4,000 tons of silver are mined. The country is rich in many other minerals, as well as oil and gas. This tremendous source of income maintains a strong economy, and poverty has decreased by 50% in 10 years. But despite all this, infrastructure is still developing. Going to the town to stock up on supplies is always a source of concern for Eloiterio. His village is at the edge of the Amazon rainforest, an 80-kilometer journey along a path that's barely wider than the vehicle itself. This stretch is only a few months old. Although it's extremely dangerous, it has changed the lives of all those living in the mountains. Ya no caminamos como antes caminábamos. Caminábamos dos días, tres días para llegar a Tayabamba a comprar los alimentos para traer para acá. The road is not yet completely finished. There are 10 kilometers left to build, but the machines can only work at a rate of four kilometers per year, and that's not including landslides and other road collapses. Acá es la final de la carretera, pues la carretera sigue continuando, ¿no? Pero nosotros nos dejan llegar hasta acá porque allá dice prohibido ingresar vehículos, no autorizados, porque ahí están trabajando la carretera, sí. El Oterio travels the rest of his journey on foot. His village is a two-hour walk away. Se pone a corcubiar, bota la carga. A largo más, bien ahí. Ahí está bien. Construction is always a dangerous operation on the roads in these mountains. Building this road has already cost one worker his life. Querido y eterno Padre que estás en los cielos, estamos presencia tu Santo Espíritu sea Señor el quien guíe a cada uno de mis amigos en este lugar. Cuídalo Señor, protege los del mal. Amen. At 66 years old, Eloiterio is not lacking in energy. Full steam ahead for the two hour journey home. For a long time to come, this journey will remain the only way to access his village. He'd not expected that the new road would reach here, but its proximity is enough to ensure that these residents are no longer isolated. This is the coca. This is the yuca. 
Y es por ahí la piña. Más antes sembrábamos solamente para comer acá nomás. Ya para poder vender no se podía vender en nada. La mula que le llevaba, agarraba carga desde acá a Tayamba, 20 soles la roba. Por decir, llevábamos yuca. La yuca en Tayamba está 20 soles la roba. Y 20 soles era el transporte. Entonces mejor no, no, no se llevaba. Mientras hoy por, con el carro, el carro te cobra dos soles por arroba. Cambió la vida ya en Hong Kong, con la carretera. Life is improving in the Andes, little by little. The mountain men have developed a certain resilience to these rustic conditions. They are practically the only people who are able to endure one of the most grueling jobs in the world. This work takes place on the islands surrounding the Peruvian coast, such as Asia Island. Those who come from the city don't last long, says Edwin. que vienen por primera vez, así. Ellos están un mes, 15 días, una semana, están bien. No aguantan por el mismo olor, el, el mismo trabajo, el mismo costumbre que no tienen de, del trabajo, ya se, se retiran de acá. Acá ya trabajan los que ya han venido anteriormente, los que lo llamamos compañeros. ¿no? Esos son los que más aguantan. These extreme workers earn double the minimum wage, but at what price? The working day begins at 5 a.m. Ahora sí al trabajo. Cuatro, seis, cuatro. Sí. This digital fingerprint reader is the only modern-day concession. The rest of the time, the men use centuries-old equipment. Estamos picando para porque está duro, pues. Tienes que picar. Un poco molestoso por el polvo, pues. Estoy con con trapo. They are all here to harvest guano. That is to say, bird droppings. It's one of the best natural fertilizers in the world. Pelicans, gannets, cormorants, millions of birds flock to the Peruvian islands. It takes between 10 and 15 years to dig out a two meter thick layer of dung. Harvesting is done by hand as machines are forbidden, for good reason. They would scare off the birds and damage their natural environment. They would be very useful for the workers, however. Working conditions are terrible. The smell of the decaying bird droppings is almost unbearable. Le afecta al pulmón el amoníaco. Los mayores ya no aguantan el, la chamba. Sifting is a real ordeal. The dust is constant. But there is a fair system in place. Nobody escapes this task. Y eso es lo que es el guano bruto. Tiene pluma, tiene piedra. Por eso nosotros tenemos que seleccionarlo bien. Esto es lo que es ya lo que estábamos tamizando, lo que está cayendo ya lo, por la zaranda. Ya está, ya está separada de la pluma. Ese que ya embarcamos ya a, la, a los lanchones para embarcar. The men harvest 50 tons of guano a day. Con 
tantôt, ça croise. Sieg. Sieg. Bien sûr, il est passé là. And no wonder, each bag weighs approximately 50 kilograms. De la costa no no resisten este trabajo. Es un trabajo bien pesado. Y los de la costa no están acostumbrados a este tipo de trabajo. Nosotros como allá en la sierra estábamos así pico, lampa, trabajábamos en la chacra y these men might be more able to cope, but at what cost? The island is swarming with ticks carried over by the birds. The Ministry of Agriculture, in charge of the guano picking, does provide workers with masks, but nobody wears them. Estas máscaras, su filtro se se llena de polvo y ya no sirve ya para respirar. Polvo, ya se le va a poner. Falta lentes. No tiene tu lentes. The only advantage for these workers is that they're able to save on expenses. They are fed and housed, but conditions are extremely tough. There's no fresh water on the island. A tanker comes weekly to deliver it. The precious liquid is rationed, only eight litres a day to wash and do laundry. The trick is to put your clothes on the floor as you shower. Hay que ahorrar, hay que ahorrar el agua. Que todo de guano te ensucia, si no, no se puede aburrir el cuerpo. Once the working day is over, entertainment on the island is few and far between. A distraernos, no hay otra cosa más que hacer, para hacer deporte o dedicarnos a la pesca. Porque si no, ¿qué vas a hacer acá en este encierro? De verdad, esto parece una cárcel, ven. Extraña bastante a la familia, todo, pero de todas maneras, como le digo, ¿no? ¿Qué, pues, ¿Qué se puede hacer extrañando a la familia? Pues si de ese trabajo la familia te come, como nosotros también nos sirve para vestirnos todo de acá. La familia te tiene que comprender eso, aunque psicológicamente no estamos malogrando la vida. Ever since the Spanish departure in 1824, Peru has suffered through several dictatorships and a Maoist guerrilla group that left tens of thousands of people victims in its wake. But today, thanks to the strength of its countrymen, the country is beginning to take flight.